welcome to Lights, Camera, Reaction. In this episode, we're featuring top London-based commercial photographer, personal brander and educator, Jerry Jarma. If you're thinking of setting up as a commercial photographer, or to be honest, wherever you are on your photographic journey, we can all learn so much from Jerry's experience and her advice. Well, I'm a bit old school in how I've promoted my business over the years, being that it's 32 years ago. If I was to start now, from scratch today, I'm not sure that that approach would actually still work. And that's why it's so good to chat with such a talented and a successful photographer with a handle on how to market her business in this new digital age. Over the last decade, online marketing and social media has come into its own. Although of course it's not the only way to reach clients, um, but it, it cannot be ignored if you're setting up in business today. We love the way Jerry shoots real people, putting them at ease and gently nudging them into finding new ways of improving their own persona, um, but also their brands. But before we jump in with the interview, and this time, lucky you, it's Nikki, here's a little more about Jerry. Jerry originates from a strong artistic background, creating sculptures on the kitchen table with her mother. Creativity was already deep within her DNA. It was inevitable that she would move into the creative industry, but it wasn't until she picked up a camera that all the pieces started to fall into line. Jerry began her career as a graphic designer, but soon realised that the desk-tied role was not for her. Hanging out with photographers, models and artists led to a degree in design, and she had an invite to go to Egypt as an assistant photographer. After several years working as an assistant, she began to rethink her career and took the plunge to be a full-time photographer with her own artistic vision. Now, 20 years later, she shoots photography and moving image direct for her employee and recruitment branding, as well as personal branding. She supports the small business owners by creating campaigns for their products and services. Her friendly approach and easy nature has attracted stellar clients, the likes of Mars, Samsung, Sky, Lloyd's Pharmacy and top jewellery brand Swarovski, to name but a few. Jerry has travelled the world photographing the rich and the famous, but her personal favourite is helping smaller brands to step up and show their potential. Her mission, in her words, is do what I love and impact other creators so they can make a decent living too. So now join us for an in-depth look behind the business of photography with the talented Jerry Jarma. Hi Jerry. <laughs> Thanks for welcoming us into your home and uh, letting us come find out a little bit of how you do things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dive right in. <laughs> Why photography and what made you want to become a photographer? Um, I didn't always want to be a photographer actually. I started as a designer, so I my mum's an artist, so I wanted to uh, be an illustrator or be a graphic designer. So I, my first degree was in design. And then I thought I'd take a year out and come to London. And coming to London, there's a lot of creatives, and that's mm. how I met other photographers. Um, and I got asked if I wanted to go away on a trip to Egypt with a friend of mine. And I was studying at the time, and I was also doing some part-time work in a design agency. And I wasn't loving it, because it was just very computer orientated, And I really loved hanging out with people. So he was like, come to Egypt, come to Egypt, have a little trip. He was like, I'll pay you to hold a reflector. And I was like, all right, okay, cool. Sounds like a good deal. Sounds like a good deal. <laughs> so I was in Egypt, I'm holding this reflector up, and I'm like, I quite like this. This is, I can, if I can get paid to do this, then yeah, I'm loving it. So then I came back to England, quit my job in a design firm, and the rest, yeah, was history. And I think I chose photography purely because of the people. I wanted to travel. I wanted to meet loads of different people and get to know them. Um, and I wanted to be creative, but I also wanted instant gratification at the same time. So by taking a photo and someone going, I love it, or I want to change it, or can we do this? It was it was such a like an instant, again, gratification rather. When you're designing, you're back and forth and back and forth. And all you ever hear is actually negativity about what you've just created. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was like, actually, photography suited my personality. And is that because you found that out once you were in the industry? Um, so you found the difference between the design and that. So that's that's the part of that. Yeah. So yeah. So by doing the experiences in the design firm and realizing actually it wasn't very client orientated. I was sat at a computer all day, which I didn't like doing. Um, it wasn't good for my well being. I, all I ever heard was negative changes, change that, and you could do like twenty sheets of design, and then they would want to change the color to a darker pink. 
and you'd be thinking I'm gonna and the deadlines in two days mm -hmm. where when photography everyone comes on set and they're really positive because a lot of them have come out from an office or you're away in a location so you're always on a different trip and you get and now with like capture and the instance of photography you get to see the image so if something is changing you can change it there and then as the client always knows kind of what they're getting at the end of it so it's, it's just so more of a positive experience. You strike me as somebody that likes um, a nice quick process. Yes, I do like a nice quick <laughs> process. Yeah, I think because I, oh, <laughs> these are my two cats. Um, I think it's because I like variety. So I like variety. I like to, I don't like to stay on anything for too long. Like most of my projects have been a week, two weeks, but that's probably like the longest. I was going to go into film, into, into movies, but the, it, the process was just too long and I had to be quiet for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned in your bio about the strong bond between you and your mum while making art on the kitchen table. Was this the beginning of your creative journey and how you ended up in the creative industry? Oh yeah, 100%. Um, my mum is an artist now. She owns uh, her own art shop in Cyprus. And we had those moments when I was a kid where it would just be me and her in the dining room. It was no longer a dining room, it was now our art room. And we would just create all day, every day. And it was really that kind of connection that I had with her that kept me really creative. I think if I hadn't done that with my mum, I don't know what I probably, oh, well, I'm doing psychology as a master's, so I probably would have gone down the psychology route. But I just loved it. And I used to make loads of little sculptures. So my mum thought I would probably go into something like sculpture. Well, I always used to draw, so that's why I went into illustration. Uh, but we didn't have, my mum had a camera, but I didn't have any cameras or computers when we were younger. So it was only through uni and meeting people that I got into photography, otherwise I would have gone down more of a sculptory drawing route. Do you actually find time to pursue your own personal work? Um, I do, I do have time. So drawing before lockdown, I did a project in Cyprus, which I still haven't edited or got out yet, as usual. Um, mm -hmm. And that was called The Forgotten Refugees. And it was about the refugees that got displaced from Farm Augusta. So that's still coming out. But then lockdown happened and COVID happened. And unfortunately, I couldn't take do more of that work. And then prior to that, I did a lovely project um, called the Heritage Crafts. Crafts that were becoming extinct because of the driving technology. And that was really good. But it's difficult to do your own projects. It does take money, so you have to save, you have to then take out time to go and do them. Um, and sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't. So you've really got to do projects that are pa you're passionate about and stories that you're interested in. Do you think passion comes into it? It's quite an important part of of everything you do oh yeah 100 mm. percent. like i love it so the reason to my projects are either going to be art orientated because i love crafts or history orientated because i love history and everything's got an element of psychology in because i love to know why the person's doing what they're doing or what their emotions are behind the project that i'm shooting so the forgotten refugees it was all psychology orientated because i wanted to know how that affected him and his family and the rest of the people that had been displaced and then the heritage crafts was about the extinction of these wonderful craftspeople that are like mm. fifth generation artisans and that's now dying as well so all of it has an element of history and crafts which comes from my own personal passionate passionate ideas and identity really would you call yourself a storyteller oh 100 percent. i think a lot of photographers depending on what you're doing is, is storytelling yeah and mm. I, again for me i love meeting people and understanding that person so when i get to be in, and i love to be no <laughs> so when I get to ask those questions and they're telling me about their lives, I just think it's fascinating. Why do you think I'm sitting here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how do you select your team and what qualities do you look for in the people you work with? Um, I, well, I've been in the industry for 20 years, so a lot of people that I work with are people that I've worked with over the 20 years. <clears throat> Either I've been, I've been assistant with them and they're now a technician and I've gone and got my own work, so I, I know that they're absolutely fantastic at their job and that they're going to support me. And I think the most important thing when I'm, when I'm bringing on my own assistants is that they have to understand that I don't see them as assistant, I see them as my... Uh, right hand, you're my second pair of eyes. You're there to support me and I'm there to support you. We're a team and I, and I really believe that you can only get really great images if your team feels supported and you feel supported as a photographer. Um, 
I think what I realised when I changed from assistant to photographer is that the photographer's role is also to make sure that the client's happy, so you're busy talking to the client mm. and make sure that, I mean, I'm photographing loads of people and usually I'm photographing like five to six people at the same time. And I've got to remember everyone's name to make them feel that connection. Definitely. So my job, is, my job on that day is to make sure that those people feel connected and feel comfortable, the client feels comfortable, that I'm making sure I get every single shot. So the last thing I need to think about is if the lighting isn't over here, right, or the lighting isn't over there, I just want to look at the picture, you take my direction, look at the picture and go, right, yeah, that's great, and tweak it. So I need a team that I know supports me and also knows my style. So mm -hmm. I prep my team before the shoot, tell them that this is what I'm going to be using, tell them about my lighting, tell them about my grade. I set everything up and then I just need to tweak. And if I feel like someone's not supporting, I usually say that to them on the day and go, listen, we're a team and we're here to support each other. If you feel uncomfortable or there's something, a problem, then feel free to speak to me. But yeah, I think it's important to understand who it is that you're working with because depending on what job you've got, it can make it really difficult if someone's not on your side. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. So what do you find the most challenging part of your business? I think the most challenging part of the business would be the marketing, yeah. Um, I always tell other photographers who I coach and mentor, anyone that's coming into the industry, that it's 20% creative, 80% business. Sometimes it's even 10% creative and 90% business. Yeah. And the most important bit is getting those clients. And yes, you've got to get new ones, but you've also got to really keep your ones that you've already got and treat them like gold. And mm -hmm. I think COVID's definitely maybe help people think that actually what they have they should be more grateful maybe be a bit more grateful for so I really support my clients right through to the end um and I think the social media now has made marketing a, a lot different like you could send a card in the post or you could maybe send an email but now you've constantly got to be out there turning up showing up showing your work letting people know why you're doing your work there's a lot more energy that goes into it now and it can be the marketing side literally can be a job in itself. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I'm really surprised you said that because you seem to really smash it as far as the marketing's <laughs> concerned, from my angle anyway. It oh, certainly thank looks you. like that. Yeah, I mean, I, but again, it's what it looks like on the outside and what it is on the inside is two different things. <laughs> and it, I, I have to work really hard. Like, mm. I have to uh, plan, I have to put my months in quarters, I have to know what content I'm writing, why I'm writing the images that I'm going, I save up a bunch of work and then I batch it out. I sometimes hire an assistant to do my social media marketing for me when I'm really busy because if I'm sh if I'm shooting, I can't do anything else. If I'm editing, I can't do anything else. Um, so really yeah. Interesting. That's really interesting. So you, you, I mean, your team is obviously stretching out now, isn't it? It's yeah. not just the, on the day, it's not just yeah. that kind of... Yeah, yeah. So I have my assistant help. team that I have, which are, and I um, and I always make sure that, you know, they're really wonderful and they're really prepped and we have team meetings. And then I also have a team that helps me behind the scenes when I've got my work coming in and I can no longer do my own marketing. And even when I'm writing my blogs and stuff for like SEO, I have a team that prep my blogs and it can be expensive. But then mm. you've just got to think, well, if I can pay um, anywhere between 500 to £1,000 a month for marketing, then how much work will that bring me in? So you have to see a return of investment. But then you also have to analyse all those numbers at the same time. But it's a business. And that's mm. what I think a lot of people coming into this industry forget that, yeah, you can pick up a camera and take a picture. And it's a lot easier than it used to be. Mm. But can you run a business? And that's what keeps you afloat. Ah, oh, that leads nicely onto my next question, actually. Um, as a photographer, what gives you the edge? Um, I think what gives you the edge is your personality. It's definitely important. Um, also your motivation to keep going when times are hard. One minute you can buy a house, next minute you think you're gonna sell your own house. Mm -hmm. um, the business side, understanding elements of business. And it took me a long time to understand the elements of business and I'm still learning every day. And I sometimes I, I completely smash it. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, this is, absolutely like climbing up a mountain um and also the, the obviously your creative side knowing your style and being okay with your own work so what is your motivation to keep going through those tough times well i mean as i mentioned i love psychology so during covid i went to do my masters in positive psychology and coaching psychology but I also knew that as a freelancer and an, and an entrepreneur, a small business owner, you have to have a certain kind of grit and resilience to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I was very curious about where that came from, from myself. Now, 
my family have always been business owners. They've owned market stores, wholesalers, they've owned shops. So we've I've always been brought up with that mentality that you work for yourself and you build your own business. So it's in your DNA. So it's in my DNA. And I've always been resilient and had the grit to keep going and being motivated. But also an element of that is also personality orientated. You have to understand your personality and be very self-aware of when you feel like you're lacking motivation or when you feel like you're procrastinating and understand why are you procrastinating, what's making you um, sometimes even self-loathe because there is an answer to get you out of any kind of dark, gloomy waters that you're in and your business does ebb and flow. Like my the photography business changes with the economy. As soon as there's any whiff of a crash, mm -hmm. photography goes downhill, any arts does. We are a luxury product. Art and creativity always will be. So you have to understand the industry, not take it personally, but you also have to look at where you can maybe find other avenues of income. When I was completely consumed by photography, sometimes it can become quite difficult because if things aren't working out and all you're thinking about is photography, 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 it can become quite exhausting. So finding other avenues of income is, is also quite imperative for some people, but also having different hobbies as well mm. um mm. you know looking outside the box doing different things like yes i like to be creative in photography but then i'll also paint or i'll do pottery or you know i'll spend time in nature me and my boyfriend go on a lot of trips and do videos when we're abroad so it's also having different outlets for when things may not be going as well as you would like but it's definitely understanding again the business side of it and thinking it's going wrong i don't believe that we fail but it's going wrong where is it going wrong? Is it because I'm not showing up enough or not marketing enough, which I've done myself? Is it because I'm concentrating on two, one thing solely and not really opening up to other avenues? Mm -hmm. Is it my attitude? Have, have, is it how? Is it where I'm coming across to clients or coming across to the people that I'm working with? Um, if I'm not motivated or I'm procrastinating, what's the reason behind it? Am I not enjoying my experience? Am I not passionate about what I'm doing? Do I need to have a change? There's always an answer. But you've just really got to understand who it is and what you want to do and where you want to go. And most importantly, are you setting goals for your business and yourself? You know, I use a, um, a quarterly goal setting. So every Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4, which is every three months. And I plan out what I want for those three months. Sometimes it works. Sometimes I reach those goals with clients. I reach those goals with income and I'm like, winnie. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I am pushing so hard and I'm not getting anything. So then I have to just take a step back and go, okay, so am I pushing in the wrong direction? Am I, am I, that's my cat just jumping <laughs> out the window, <laughs> trying to catch a bird. Um, yeah, am I pushing in the wrong direction? Am I, um, or is it, is the economy going down or, you know, people's income ebbs and flows as well. Advertising agencies do. do. So I know in January, for example, I have to do a new big push using social media platforms to market my business if I want to take that extra leap. It has to be done. Mm -hmm. Or I can sit back and hope that it comes in, but it probably won't. Or I'll use, or my old clients will come in, but then what happens if they move on? Mm -hmm. You have to prep, plan and prep and think ahead. Okay, I'm going to ask you something now. What's the biggest mistake you've made in your career so far? Yeah, the easiest answer was assisting way too long. And the reason being um, is because when you assist too, too long, you get really comfortable. And then you don't do what, it's ne what you need to do to actually start running your business as a photographer because you get used to the money. And it's fantastic money. You get variety, you get experience, um, but you don't take the plunge. And you then become a bit behind in starting up your own enterprise should I say and learning your own lessons of how to run a business so you can become stuck if you assist too long. So are there benefits to being an assistant photographer? Yeah assisting is actually a paradox like there's it depends on where you want to be as a person um do you want to be a photographer or are you happy to be an assistant? Now, assisting has evolved. It's not the same as what it was when we were using film and you would assist for three years and then you would go and get your own clients. Assisting now has evolved from assisting to becoming technicians. And also the rates have changed completely down. So when I first started, this is 20 years ago, I could anywhere between 
75 pound for the day to 150 and then it went from 150 to 250 and now generally it's between 250 to 350 to 500 for advertising jobs big advertising jobs but you've got to remember the the 250 to 350 is mid then the 350 to 500 is kind of one-off advertising jobs every now and again depending on budgets and obviously depending on what's going on with the climate and then the 150 to 250 is generally what happens most of the time in the industry depending on your experience now for myself after about i would say five years i stopped assisting for 150 just because i was more qualified than that and i saw myself as not being taught by the photographer i saw myself as being the second hand of the photographer so with that means that your rates could go up or should go up depending on what it is that you're working on if you're doing editorial commercial or advertising now, again, because it's evolved with assisting, when I decided that assisting wasn't right for me, it was because I wanted to be a photographer. I wanted to be the lead creative. I wanted that responsibility. Um, I wanted to speak with the art directors and the agencies. And I basically wanted to be in control because I'm a control freak, as most photographers <laughs> are. But if you want to stay as an assistant, there's a huge career path there. And you actually could end up earning more than a photographer because you'll be working more. So a photographer might w work average maybe two to four days a week an assistant can work seven days a week every month um, and if you're earning 250 to 500 depending on your jobs and who you're assisting you could be on like nearly 60 to 80 grand a year so and that's when you start becoming an assistant and start becoming a technician and if you're going to bring in your own equipment so your own computer your own screen you bring your own cameras and even sometimes your own lights some photographers travel so they don't have all that stuff with them you can then command a thousand pounds you could be on the same as a photographer a photographer might be on 1500 you might be on a thousand because you've got mm. all the kit mm. so it, again there's a real good um basis for a career move but you have to understand what it is that you want to do now for me i didn't want to be a technician or an assistant so i had to really say do i have what it takes to put the effort in mm. to be a photographer because it's hard work with the marketing but if you are happy to be a technician or assistant that's also a very good viable career move and a lot of my friends are technicians and are doing fantastically well and I couldn't do a job without them that's how mm. important they are. In your opinion do you think the world is saturated with too many photographers already? Uh, for 20 years I've heard that the world is saturated with photographers and for 20 years from now I'll hear the world is saturated with photographers. The, the, everywhere is saturated. It's not about um, it being saturated, it's about what, how, what's your part to play in the saturation. So there's two ways around it. You can undercut the photographers and become a commodity and then it'll be really difficult to grow a business or you can understand the elements of business and who you are and what you want to shoot and become part of an evolving creative industry and not be self-loathing that there's loads of other photographers out there getting work. Because actually, as I've been there myself and I've gone, there's too many photographers in the world. Yeah, but what makes you stand out? What, what are you doing to get work? What are you doing to upgrade your photography? What are you doing for your personality to make sure you're sociable or make sure you're invoicing on time? You know, what are you doing to bring in business for yourself and forget about what the rest of the world is doing? Because it's only going to get worse. And that's the fact. I mean, it's only going to get worse for our industry. It's going to be like that for every industry as technology gets better, as more people get born, as the economy changes. So you have to carve out your little area for your industry. Specifically towards technology, though, it's more accessible, isn't it? Mm, um, yeah, I think it's it's easier to get into the industry. So when I started, we were still on film. The cameras were absolutely massive. It was very male dominant because the kit was really heavy. The lights were ginormous and took about 15 people to move one. <laughs> um, we had to do light setups. Um, you know, have the old Polaroid under the armpit and all that kind of stuff. But it also meant that shoots were a lot slower and you could command more money because it was so technical. And that's where the master of photography comes from. But now with equipment, yeah, it's a million times easier to get into the industry. Some of my cameras shoot 4,000 ISO and there's hardly any grain. Like, but I shoot flash. So my speciality is that I can light any room anywhere and make it look like sunshine because I've trained for 20 years. I assisted for 10 years. I worked with the best photographers around the world. I specialize in working with real people and or, um, corporate and, and lifestyle and branding. So yeah, there's a market saturated, but I, I am carving my own way with my own expertise. 
and understanding what it you need to do to build a business in an oversaturated market rather than just picking up a camera saying I'm a daylight photographer and thinking work's going to roll in. That's the difference. So if you could speak to yourself as a younger you starting out what one piece of advice would you give yourself? Oh what advice I would say be brave experiment as much as you can all the time to understand who you are and what you like realize that there's no such thing as failing only learning uh, learn business as quick as possible understand money understand cash flow understand um, that your clients are your bedrock they are worth their weight in gold and be as nice and polite and as kind as you possibly could and be grateful for every day that you get work off a client and um, figure out what you want to do how you want to do it and who you are as quickly as possible and work your ass off because <laughs> it does not come easy unless you know someone in the industry unless you've got massive amounts of cash flow unless you're really wealthy. I mean, I start from nothing and I've built my way up and I've studied and I've worked hard. And yeah, it takes, and it takes so much time. So much time, more time than you think it will take. It takes a lot of time to keep going. So do you have a new path for your business going forward? Oh yeah, 100%. And mainly because of lockdown, I reached out to a lot of other photographers and creators who were struggling because they'd lost their work. And I was doing a lot of coaching, helping people to um, find new goals and new paths and just, just share my own knowledge and my own experience. And mainly because they saw that I was constantly showing up and they were getting in touch with me and asking me what I was doing and, you know, was I working and all this kind of stuff because I was showing up. Uh, but as I mentioned, what you see on Instagram is you see the final stuff. You don't see the hard work that goes on behind it. So I went back to university to do my master's in positive psychology and coaching psychology because I truly believe if you're going to coach anyone or give anyone your expertise, you should be credited in that area. As we are in photography, we, we learn and we train and so you can say you're, you're a photographer. Um, so going forward in 2022, I'm setting up my own workshops to and masterminds that will help creators and photographers understand what it is to have grit, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and, and build a business holistically. But also I'm bringing in other entrepreneurs that do marketing and business and sales so I can instill that information into creators because a lot of people are either coming out of their organizations where they haven't actually had to build their own business and don't understand what goes on behind the scenes of building a business and understanding the strategies and systems and sales techniques that you need to build a business. But then they also don't understand the, the grit, the emotional intelligence, the self-awareness, the motivation to keep going when things get difficult, which is mindset orientated as well. And you need both of these things to be able to keep moving forward. But then you also need to understand that if it doesn't work out the way that you work out and you change along the journey, that's also okay. I think holding on to um, this idea that if you set your path down one thing and then suddenly it evolves into something else that it's wrong, it isn't necessarily true. Like I'm evolving all the time and I'm changing and that's business and that's, that's the career as a photographer. You can start off as one and finish doing something else. So that's what I'm hoping to help other creatives do in 2022. 2022? Yeah. <laughs> Was it the effects of the last couple of years which have changed your way of thinking? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, COVID definitely gave me the opportunity to have a break because I worked constantly and I didn't want to get off that hamster wheel of earning money. So when COVID happened, I was like, oh my God, I've actually got the time to consider other options, which is what I wanted to do was go back to university and do my master's. So give me the space to do it. Um, but also I remember the struggle that I went through when I was making the transition from assisting to photography. And I remember speaking to so many other creators who I speak to now and the struggle that they find in the industry, finding work, finding clients, staying motivated, staying on the path, setting goals. Um, and I had to think, well, how have I, I mean, I was, apart from doing one stint for a couple of months in an organization, I was freelance since I was 16. I've always built my own businesses. So what I think sometimes may come natural to me doesn't come natural to other people. And I'm extroverted, I'm outgoing, so I can show up, but I still find it difficult. And if I find it difficult, other people must find it difficult too. So I think it's nice if we all come together and be open, authentic about the business, about 
the stress is the, the difficultness, the income, the projects, the clients, what goes on behind the scenes. And I'm happy to share all that information because if it can help somebody else get a foot in and the water and helps them find their path, then, then why not? I'm always evolving, so I have nothing to worry about. It's giving back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like sharing. Sharing is caring. <laughs> As the old saying goes, and I think that old mentality back in the 80s, even 70s, where you cover your work and you don't share, and I got that from a lot of old photographers when I first started assisting, where I was like, well, I'm assisting you because you're supposed to be sharing, but I'm asking you about the business and you're not telling me. And they're like, you have to find your own clients, but how? So I'm like, just because I give you all the information doesn't mean that my path is right for you. You can try and go down it, but you won't, you'll be chasing my tail. So you need to find your own path with the information that I give you. So true. <laughs> Jerry, thank you so much for not only welcoming us into your home, <laughs> but talking to us about your business and your personal journey. Thank you. Thank you, well thank you for having me. I'm grateful to be a part of this and yeah, hopefully it will help anybody else coming into this industry. Thank you for watching and I hope you've gleaned some top tips and tricks that will help you along your own path of commercial photography. If you found any of this interesting, please click the link, tap the like and we can make sure that you are the first to hear when the next episode is released. We will continue to work on further interviews with amazingly talented photographers. In the meantime, please let us know your thoughts and your comments below. If you're intrigued to see who we are featuring in the future, do subscribe and like the channel. Uh, and then we can keep filming and bringing these incredible photographers to your screen.